A lot of people say, oh, Spec Nun is so much better than Crytac. Yeah, if you get one that works. Timestamps in the description for the things that you actually care about. What do we actually get in the box? Get a huge sheet of stickers, the chronograph chart. It says the hop up is fully released. This is not how you test the chronograph. You'll, I'll test it correctly later. Get user manual. Don't care. What do we got here? This is a huge poster. Yeah, it's a huge poster. Whatever. You got your M90 spring, your Beans to Tamiya adapter, vertical foregrip, two mid caps, you get a card for the different lights of the Gate XASR, and then you have the gun itself. Here is an external close-up. I'm gonna pan over both sides. Stock loose, a little bit. Unlike the SEMO Platinum review, I'm going to let you judge the externals for yourself. In this portion of the video, I will be doing magazine fitment tests and chronograph. First, I need to plug the battery in and adjust the hop up. I like that. That's pretty snappy to be honest. I like that. I'm going to adjust the hop up off camera because that's a boring process that no one really needs to watch. This is with 0.2 gram BBs with the hop up set correctly for it. 389, 389, 392, 393, 389. Let's go for rate of fire 20.5. 20.4 all right now i shall transition to 0.32s this is with 0 0.32 gram bbs with the hop up set correctly for them 306 3 298 301 302 302 all right Let's see what happens with an M90 spring on 11.1. I am anticipating overspin. No? Oh, yeah. Hold on. The cutoff lever locked up. All right, let's give it a shot. The hop up is still set for three twos. Let's get some three twos in there and see what happens. 239.85 joules, 244, 244, 243, 243. All right, I'm going to readjust the hop up back to 0.2s and we'll chronograph that. The hop up has been readjusted for 0.2s now with the M90 spring. Nope, oh, locked up, hold on. Okay. 317, getting some double spin, 292, 317, 317, 318, yeah, okay, I, I would not recommend using an 11.1 with the M90 spring, how about auto, 18, 20.9, about the same rate of fire, so I'm getting about 318 FPS, 317. Definitely would use an 11.1. 1. 
No, 7.4, not 11.1. Here's a quick clip showing the M90 spring with a 7.4 battery, which is 1500 milliamp hours 60C. Now for the magazine fitment test. I actually use these two for the chrono test, so I already know which actually works out of these two, but I'll show you all of them anyway. First off, PTS EPM. Goes in solid, no vertical play, no horizontal play. Yeah, this direction. It's got a little bit of side wiggle, but it is extremely secure and it drops free. PTS EPM one. It's got a bit of back and forth wiggle, more side to side play than the EPM one. A small amount of vertical play and drops free. Evike Banff Gen two. Locks in. Uh, I wouldn't call this reliable. Let's see. This is a GNG high cap. This comes with combat machines. Nope. All right. This one comes with Raider 2.0s. Quite a bit of play. I think it would work. Now I have a Lonex flash mag. Hold on. Oh, going on here? It's very tight in the front of the magwell. Like, okay, I mean, it locked in, but I have to like. <laughs> oh dear. <sighs> Yeah, don't do that one. All right, Vulcan Infinity Flash Mag. Uh, I actually do have BBs in this one. Yeah, that feeds. Yeah, that's pretty good. For those of you that watched my current draw video, you'll know that the input voltage doesn't really affect the current load of the entire system. So I'm only going to test the current draw with 7.4 because that's what I have charged up right now. I will show you in rapid succession two videos. The first one will be with the M90 spring and the second one will be with the M120 spring or the one that comes in the gun. Now begins the teardown portion of this video. I haven't opened this gun yet, so it won't be as fast as if I would be doing this the 10th time. I'll talk if there's anything interesting notes, otherwise you're just going to be watching me take this gun apart. My apologies if I actually hit, if I accidentally hit the uh, phone stand that I'm filming with. It makes it quite wiggly. Take the MOSFET out. This is being annoying.
Come here. Oh my God. Come on. All right. We'll do the upper first. Mainly, I'm just going to be looking inside of the hop up. There's nothing particularly special about that. All right, this can be set aside. Hop up. How's the camera looking so far? I can't actually see what the camera's looking at while I'm filming. How's the, uh, I'm also live streaming this on Discord right now. How does that look? Um, looks usable. Okay. It was a little dirty, but I have shot this already, so I'll just attribute it to that. Let's get that clip off of there. Wow, that's kind of tight. Wow, that's really tight. Uh, oh, I see why. There's a little key. Okay. So I gotta get that out of there. I hope I don't break this. People are DMing me on Discord. Oh, yeah, the camera is a little bit dark. Okay. Come on, don't break the hop up. There we go. So what I was struggling with is there's a second key. There's a second key on the C clip. So it's not as easy as normal to pry off, but it is more secure in my opinion. Let's put the zoom back out. Stop moving. Okay. Now let's turn the hop up all the way off. And pull it on out of there. There is grease on the outside of the barrel, which means there's probably going to be grease in the bucking. The outside of the bucking is just a little wet. It's not heavily greased. There's quite a bit more grease on the actual barrel itself. Let's get a close in for that. Grab the phone. <clears throat> Let's see if there's any, yeah, there's, it's in the bucking. Let's see if I can see the uh, the actual bump in there itself. Just the normal bump type booking. All right, that is it for the upper. Now for the important part, lower.
Why is that so tight? I'm prying it from the inside of the mag well. There we go. I'm prying it, was prying it from the inside of the mag well, I guess. Yeah, the fit. The fitment on this oval keyway is a little bit tight so after a couple times of going back and forth with this it should be fine so let's put all these together so i don't lose them <clears throat> the main objective i'm looking for or the main things that i'm looking for in this gearbox are shims on both sides of the gear and some amount of lubrication inside the gearbox. Let's do the motor next. What was that? Oh. This should just come right out. Okay. I use this little tool to take off the motor leads so I can pull straight on the spade connectors. They're a little tight on there. Just <laughs> everything on this gun so far is kind of tight. There we go. You won't have to worry about it coming loose though. This one's a bit more annoying. There we go. Right. See how strong these magnets are. Vecna Arms Advanced Motor. Magnets aren't particularly strong, at least not with a, a stick, like a steel test. Uh, oh yeah, I was told to look for the color. The magnets are colored black. Let's get that on the video. I was told specifically to look for the color of the magnets inside this motor. And they are indeed black magnets. I believe these are ferrous though. But I'll wait for someone to tell me through the Discord that I'm live streaming to. Okay. Four screws inside of the grip instead of the usual two that you see on most guns. Okay, people are pinging me on Discord. What is it? Um, I'm not answering that right now. I'm noticing there's actually there's a small rib on the magwell. If you if you uh, watch the mag fit test of the like the the portion where I tested where all the mag fits are, there's actually a bump right here on the front of the magwell about millimeter of raised material i bet that's why the gng high cap didn't go in the mag well let's see if i can show that right there that line right there so if you have any issues where it seems like this direction of the mag well is too narrow you could try removing that material 
That should be all the screws. side of the teeth nice and loose no issue getting that out let's see what's holding this in there mm, it's a little tight let's get a punch and a hammer nearby if I have it It's the uh, kind where the teeth bite into the receiver itself. See what I can see on the outside of the gearbox. I like the aluminum nozzle, even though it doesn't particularly matter. Bearings all the way around. This is a feature I like more and more. The uh, notch here for the wires, it gets it away from the pinion gear a little bit more. And then here is where you can actually grab the ARL and pull that loose in case you ever need to do so. It's got a cut here for the bevel gear, I like that. I'm sure people have already done plenty of teardowns on the uh, Spect Arms Orion gearbox. Let's go ahead and cut that warranty label because I could not care less about a warranty. Okay, hmm. all right, let's open this up. It does have molded in radiusing. It's not technically in the correct spot, but molded radiusing is better than no radiusing. There is none on the back, however. Try it a little bit, get it off that cylinder head. There we go. All right, let's see. There are no shims on this side of the gearbox and there is plenty of lubricant on the shell. Show that to Discord. Plenty of lubricant on the top half of the shell. Get that on camera too. Watch me wipe it with my finger, mm, yeah. And there is a shim on every gear on this side of it. There is quite a bit of grease on the body of the piston. It's a little unnecessary, but it doesn't hurt anything. Let's take the tappet spring off. 
and then take the compression out. All right, what do we got here? We have a single, oh, technically it's a double O-ring piston head, but the first one is not there. You can see there's a groove for it. I don't actually care about this. I'm not, I'm used to just single O-ring piston heads. Full metal rack right piston with the first, the uh, second tooth removed. What I mean by that is on a normal piston, there is a tooth here. This one is removed. How about, there is a rubber pad inside the, well, for the cylinder head. Let's go ahead and take the nozzle off. How many O-rings do we have in here? One O-ring for the nozzle. How many O-rings for the cylinder head? If I can get it off. Double O-ring cylinder head. That's nice. Let's go ahead and check the compression. So I'll pop that back in there. Let's do it without the nozzle first. Oh my. Hold on, let's see. Make sure my finger's clean. Yeah, that's, that is a negative on air seal. <laughs> wow. Oh, hold on. Hmm. What's going on here? I want, give me that tap of plate. I want to keep this cylinder head exactly in place. This O-ring is a little bit flattened. I think if I replace this, it should fix the air seal. Right? Like, see? It's working now. I think the grease is messing with the air seal. Let's, uh, let's see if I can get that to repeat with the nozzle on. Because the FPS was nice and consistent when I was chronoing it. Put the tap it plate on there to extend it like it would be in a normal like firing position I'll forward a bit I think it can it get the air seal to stick again uh, let's see i'm being messaged again on discord did the guide o-ring slip out um maybe it's in the cylinder no there is Oh, you mean like if there is a plastic one in there? I don't see any in there. No, there is no plastic ring on the cylinder head. I know what you're talking about. The uh, the SEMA FMRs have that. Or you're talking about what the smaller one would be up front. No, I can't get the air seal to repeat right now. Come on. I'll revisit this in a few minutes with uh, with an upgraded O-ring, a McMaster car X-ring. Anyway, we have more than adequate lubrication on this side of the gearbox for the piston and the gears. There's quite, just quite frankly, a shitload of grease on the anti-reversal latch. Like, it's almost a little bit annoying. Here's a huge booger of it. Pull that out. There's the shim on both sides for the bevel gear. ARL is just grease all over the place. Shim on both sides of the sector gear. And shim on both sides of the spurs. So those were the main two things I was looking for. Adequate lubrication and then shims on every side of the gear. That's about it. There's nothing really else special about the inside of the gearbox. This is contacts, which activate the MOSFET. By the way, I will be doing a uh, quote unquote meltdown test of the MOSFET like I did with the SEMA Platinum and I tried to do with the Gate Titan. Let's see if there is any other questions from the Discord. I'll go ahead and unmute myself. Okay, now I can hear you. 
Got any other questions before I stop filming this? I don't believe so. Okay. There is a underneath the grease they put on the wire, the uh, some kind of red, uh, what would I call it? Let me get you over here. Actually, you know what? There's some kind of red heat shrink on the wires holding them together in there. Yeah, that's new from the old gens. The old gens did not have that. Mm -hmm. um, is there gouging in the cylinder? In the piston? Oh, let's see. And you did not bind together the O-ring in the cylinder head, so that means it's missing. There is no gouging from the piston rack, but there is some small scraping, what I would believe, from the piston head. Here. that's about it this is a feature i like seeing in gearboxes i'll show the uh youtube video of this hold on what i was talking about earlier with the channel that holds the wires in not only that there is a clip that holds the wire back from the pinion gear this makes double sure that your wires don't get caught up in the pinion and get torn up if you ever happen to open this up i believe that uh Red heat shrink is for the MOSFET wire, where it ties into the positive lead. Because there's only go there's only two wires going into the heat shrink, and there's three coming out. Which is kind of interesting. Yeah, they decided to put it there. That should be it. Up next is the meltdown. I'm going to put this back together in the lower receiver, and then we can see if we can try try to destroy ourselves a gate XASR. I spent the last couple minutes stretching the stock O-ring around the cylinder to widen it out a little bit, see if I can improve or improve the consistency of the air seal. Now I'm revisiting the air seal with the quote-unquote stretched O-ring where I had it around here for a few minutes. First, we'll test it with just the cylinder head, my finger over the cylinder head nozzle. No leak, no leaks at all. Now, I got my nozzle on the tappet plate here. I'm going to put it down like that so it's easier for me to hold. So, set up just like this. Actually, no, let's do my thumb over the nozzle. So, just like that. Hold on, I pushed the cylinder head in. Yeah, would recommend doing that. You can see on the inside of the cylinder where the piston head is scraping a little bit, the anodized coating off of the cylinder. You can also, well here, actually let's zoom in a little bit. Let's see how it's coming off. Let's try the other side. That's just grease from the, uh, cylinder head actually whereas the piston head you can see on it there's some anodized missing a couple spots i don't know if this will be a long-term problem it certainly was a problem in the sema platinum where they were quite literally eating into each other the aoe is just about perfect now for the MOSFET stress test, torture test, whatever you'd like to call it. I was going to use this 2.2 amp hour battery like I've used in the previous test, but it would consistently double cycle even with the stock M120 spring. So I'm using the 1.3 amp hour 11.1 that I used in my chronographing videos. I'm going to either fire this continuously with one for one minute and then I'll stop, or I will stop when the overload blinking red begins or if something more interesting happens we'll see just function check okay here we go
right, let's see. The MOSFET, it's warm to the touch. The actual, the actual wires are a little bit warmer than the uh, MOSFET itself. No, it's fine. Now, why am I not taking this to failure? It's because I actually want to use this gun. Unlike the SEMA Platinum, I had an immediate replacement available. This one, I don't have a friend that also bought this at the same time. Or, like, the Gate Titan. I knew that wasn't going to fail. Um, motor doesn't feel that hot yet. Or at least it's not as hot as the SEMA Platinum. Here's the can from that motor, by the way. So, overall, this is the finish of my review of the Specna Arms SAE20. People who work in the industry have informed me what their return rate is, and it's not good.